Welcome. In this short video, I'm going to guide you through the proper troubleshooting procedure to locate a refrigerant undercharge or leak in the commercial air conditioning simulator. To begin with, we're going to click on the thermostat. And then once at the thermostat, we're going to click on this little blue square here, which will turn the thermostat to cooling mode and also turn the temperature setting down. To begin with, we're going to take a brief inventory of which electrical loads are running. So we're going to start at the indoor unit. Click on the indoor unit icon here at the bottom right. And if you have speakers, you can hear that the indoor blower is running. If you don't have speakers, you can still verify this by clicking on the side door. And there's a convenient blue arrow graphic provided that indicates that the indoor blower is running. Next, we're going to go to the outdoor unit. Clicking on the outdoor unit icon at the bottom right, we can hear the compressor running and we can see that the condenser fan is also running. Now again, for further verification or if you don't have speakers, you could simply measure the amperage of the compressor to determine if it's running or not. We're going to assume it's running as we can hear it. This means we have a mechanical problem of some type, possibly a lack of airflow at the indoor or outdoor unit or a refrigerant charge condition, such as a leak or an undercharge. Now, it is very important to know that if you have an undercharge or an overcharge of refrigerant or poor airflow on either the indoor or outdoor coil, this may cause one of the safety switches on this unit to turn the outdoor unit off. In this case, the unit will cycle back on once pressures or temperatures have been uh, re-established to normal conditions and the unit will continue to cycle like this on and off. Here we can see it is running currently so what we're going to do next is we're going to check the airflow. Now I suggest you use this procedure guide here at the top left. If we click on this it'll walk us through each step in this pro uh, troubleshooting procedure. So we've, we've taken care of step one and step two. We've determined that the indoor fan is running, the outdoor fan is running, and the compressor is running. So let's keep clicking yes here. Now, is the condenser clean? Well, we can kind of pan around and look around the outside of the unit, and we don't see any obvious debris or obstructions here, but what I always like to do is open the unit up and look from the inside. Often, you'll have dirt that, that is on the inside that may not be visible from the outside of the unit. Here we can see that the coil is relatively clean, so we don't look like we have a, an issue with airflow on the outdoor unit. At the indoor unit, and we're going to go back there for just a brief period, click on the indoor unit, we're going to pull the filter and see if the filter is in fact clean. Um, click on this area here in the return air side and it should remove the filter from the unit and we can check to see if the filter is in fact clean or not. So we pulled the cover up here and we can see the filter right here. We'll take it out and if we take it out we can see the filter looks to be very clean on both sides. Um, we're going to put it back away. So we verify we don't have an obvious airflow condition. We're going to close the unit back up now. Uh, and replace the doors back on the unit. Next, we want to check the refrigerant charge. Now, this unit has a thermostatic expansion valve metering device shown right here. The thermostatic expansion valve metering device maintains superheat in the evaporator, so we cannot use superheat as a charge indicator. Um, that's only used when we have a fixed bore metering device. What we use on this type of unit is condenser subcooling, or the amount of temperature that the liquid refrigerant uh, has lost in the condenser coil. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to the outdoor unit and we're going to place the gauges on the unit, the hoses on the unit, to see what the pressures and the temperatures are. Now for this particular um, malfunction, I'm going to use a digital gauge manifold right here which is convenient because it, it incorporates both the temperature probe and the pressure sensors in one component. It also calculates superheat and subcooling for us. So for this uh, particular step, we don't really need to measure the low side pressure. We want to obtain the measured subcooling margin and compare it to the manufacturer's recommendation. So we're going to take the red hose and we're going to attach it to the liquid line service port right here and we're also attaching the temperature probe at the same time and what we can see here is we have 250 PSIG uh, on the liquid line which corresponds to an 85 degree saturation temperature or condensing temperature. 
Now this provides us with an important clue and I'll show you what it is. If we remove the thermometer or the psychrometer from the toolbox and we measure the outdoor temperature, we can see that it's 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The condensing temperature or saturation temperature should correspond to a temperature approximately 20 to 25 degrees above this. So we should be condensing at about 115 or 120 degrees. If we store this back away and we look at the gauge display, we can see that we have 250 PSIG, which converts to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. You can also use the temperature pressure chart over here on the right by clicking on this tab to verify that. And again, if we look up 250 PSIG, we're approximately 85 degrees. Now, this indicates lower than normal pressures here. So our next step, and we're going to skip a little bit on the procedure guide because we've already determined that the filter's clean. Using the procedure guide, our next step is to measure the compressor amperage at the uh, compressor contactor. Um, under normal conditions, this particular unit should draw 23 amps for the expected load conditions. Now, click on the toolbox tab and take the clamp on ammeter out. Open the door and place it on the glowing hotspot, which will measure the compressor current force. And as we can see here, we've only got 17 amps. So currently we know that not only is the amperage low, but the, the high side pressure or the condensing temperature is very low as well. Um, this most likely indicates an undercharge or a leak in the system. So I'm temporarily going to store this back away. And we're going to measure subcooling here. Units with thermostatic expansion valves, most new units, use subcooling as a charge indicator or a refrigerant charge indicator. This information can be obtained from the unit data plate. This will provide you with what the target subcooling is or what normal subcooling should be. So what we're going to do here, we're going to measure subcooling and compare it to what the manufacturer specification is. So we're going to take the gauges back out of the toolbox and we're going to back out just a little bit. We're going to place the red hose on the liquid line service connection. This also places the temperature probe on there. And what we can see here is that we're measuring 250 PSIG, which converts to an 85 degree saturation temperature or condensing temperature. This is much too low. If we remove the sling psychrometer from the toolbox and just simply measure the temperature of the air entering the condenser or the outdoor temperature, it's 95 degrees. Under normal conditions, the condensing temperature or saturation temperature in the condenser should be about 20 to 25 degrees above this ambient temperature meaning it should be about 115 to 120 degrees. And as we can see here, we've only got 85 degrees. I'm going to store the psychrometer away temporarily. Uh, we can further verify this by using the temperature pressure chart here. And if we look up 250 PSIG, we're approximately 85 degrees. This would be necessary if you're using the analog gauges as opposed to the digital gauges. So let's store the temperature pressure chart away. Now, the manufacturer's subcooling margin, again, can be obtained from the unit data plate or possibly the installation manual for the unit. Clicking on this little icon in the pressure, I'm sorry, the procedure guide, we can see that on this particular unit, the normal subcooling margin is 13 degrees. Again, this means that the liquid refrigerant should cool 13 degrees below the condensing temperature or saturation temperature in the condenser. This is going to be different with, with different types of units. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that this target uh, has a tolerance of plus or minus three degrees. So as long as we're measuring between 10 and 16 degrees of subcooling, uh, the unit is properly charged. So as we can see here, we've got an 85 degree saturation temperature. Our liquid line is measuring 82. This means we're only subcooling three degrees. This indicates that we have an undercharge of refrigerant, possibly as the result of a leak. So what we're gonna do here, um, we're gonna go to the next step and we're gonna take out the refrigerant leak detector and just check for leaks. Now my suggestion here, prior to using the leak detector, look around the mechanical joints. Typically there's only six of them. You have two here at the outdoor unit, two at the filter dryer, and then there's two at the indoor unit. 
I would look for traces of oil around these fittings. Run your fingers under the fittings. Um, this will generally give you an indication of where the leak is or at least a rough location. We're going to take the leak detector out and we're going to move it along these mechanical joints. If a leak is present, it'll result in an audible alarm as well as an increase on this light scale over here. So as we move it here to the two fittings at the liquid line and suction line connections at the outdoor unit, we don't see anything going on here. If we go to the filter dryer, which is here, uh, we don't see any potential leaks there. So now we need to just go to the indoor unit and check there. Check around the metering device. Also, you may want to remove the cover and check inside around the distributor to make sure there's no leaks. And as we can see, we don't have any leaks present here. Um, in the event that you did find a leak, you may want to verify that with soap bubbles. But in this case here, more than likely what happened when the unit was installed or possibly on a previous service call, the technician did not adequately charge the unit. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to the outdoor unit. Now that we know that a leak is not present, it's not going to be necessary to recover or pump down the system of refrigerant and repair the leak. We just simply need to add some refrigerant to the system. Click on the blue hose and attach it to the suction line service port. We're going to store the leak detector back away for now. We need to add the refrigerant to the low side of the system, so it is necessary to hook up the blue hose at this point. To add refrigerant, simply click on the virgin cylinder right here with the plus sign on it. Well, as we can see, as we, as we added refrigerant, we've got our four stars and our pressures have increased and our subcooling is now 13 degrees. So we've solved the problem here and we've corrected it. Our last step is to store the gauges back in the toolbox, make sure all caps and covers are replaced. We're going to go back to the indoor unit and we're just going to make sure that we put all the covers back on there and we did. And our next step is to click on the broom to clean the work area. Good luck. Hey, it is Craig with Interplay Learning. We hope you enjoyed this last video. The easiest way to keep up with all of our latest videos is by subscribing to our page right here. Just to let you know, if you're interested to learn how simulations are critical to onboarding and improving you or your employees' performance in the field, please visit us at interplay-learning.com.